Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Russ LeBlanc, your NEC consultant and code expert. In this video, I will be discussing load calculations. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at dwelling unit feeder and service lighting demand loads. So, if you want to grab your 2023 code book and a calculator and a scrap paper and a pen, a pencil, whatever you want to write with, we can dive right into these calculations. Okay. All right. A couple things before we get into them. Um, in part one of Article 220, there are some general requirements, and, and this is going to apply to uh, all the load calculations throughout Article 220. If we take a look at 220.5, there's a couple things there we want to look at. First one is the voltages. And just so we're, we're all on the same page, we're going to use nominal voltages, the nominal voltages assigned in 220.5a, okay? Don't use anything else, all right? And there's several different voltages there, including 120 volts, 12240, 240, all right? Don't use 115 or 110 or 230, right? Only the assigned nominal voltages as specified in 210. 220.5a. And when it comes to fractions of an amp, 220.5b gives us permission to round up or round down, and we can drop small fractions if they're less than 0.5. So it's completely up to you. Whatever works in your favor as far as the calculation goes. But what you, can't, what you cannot do is drop a fraction of 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7 amps. You can either keep it or round up, but you can't drop that. You don't have permission to do that. And if we go to 225.5c, we're gonna talk about the floor area. We need to know the floor area in order to calculate the general lighting load. And we're going to use the outside dimensions of the building when calculating the floor area, All right? Don't go room by room. I don't add the living room plus the dining room plus the kitchen. We don't do that. We just look at the outside area as a whole, and that's it. And if there's two floors, then you do the outside area of the first floor plus the outside area of the second floor. For dwelling units, we're not going to include open porches or unfinished areas that could not be used as a habitable room or an occupiable space. And an example there could be um, an attic, an unfinished attic where the ceiling height's too low for it to ever be a habitable room or an occupiable space. Even if there's a floor put down, it could never be used as an occupiable space, so we wouldn't need to include that in the floor area. Now, as far as garages go, prior to 2023, they were excluded, specifically excluded, from the floor area calculation, but the references to garages got removed for 2023, so I guess we should include garages now. And that makes sense to me if you think about it. There is lighting there, and there's receptacles there, so we should include the square footage of the, gar the garage with the rest of the dwelling unit, if it's an attached garage. Okay, and that gets us to part three of Article 220. And this is for feeder and service load calculations. So basically, the feeder or service calculated load, right? Some textbooks might use the term demand load. The code says calculated load, so I, I guess it's okay to say demand load because we really are going to be applying demands to these loads. So I guess it doesn't really matter what you call it. The code calls it calculated load. So the calculated load is the branch circuit loads plus any applicable demand factors. And so this is why some people call it the demand load. For dwelling unit lighting, the minimum unit load is three volt amps per square foot. It can't be less than that. Three volt amps per square foot. And this three volt amps per square foot includes several items, including number one, all general use receptacle outlets of 20 amps or less, including receptacles connected to the 20 amp circuits required for bathrooms 
and garages. Number two, the receptacle outlets required for outdoors, basements, garages, and accessory buildings. And all required lighting outlets are built into that three volt amps per square foot. So we don't need to add anything else. Everything's built into that three volt amps per square foot. There are no additional load calculations for any of these items. The minimum lighting load, the minimum lighting load gets determined by multiplying that unit load of three volt amps per square foot times the floor area. So that's pretty straightforward. Floor area times three volt amps per square foot, that gives us the minimum lighting load. And then there are some demands we can apply to that. Okay, for small motors, motors less than one eighth of a horsepower and connected to a lighting circuit, uh, they're considered part of the lighting load. No additional load calculations necessary. And so an example of that might be a paddle fan. Right? A paddle fan in a bedroom is connected to the bedroom lighting circuit. No additional load calculation for that paddle fan, even though it is an appliance. It's just considered a lighting load. In this case, another example might be a bathroom exhaust fan, right? If it's connected to the lighting circuit, it's part of the three volt amps per square foot. Nothing else to add. Okay. So in this example, we're going to find the minimum load for general lighting and receptacles. Remember, the re general purpose receptacles are included in this three volt amps per square foot. So the house is 62 by... 24. All right, so if you would like to pause the video and figure this out, you can do that and I'll keep going. You can, you know, restart the video whenever you're done and then we'll keep going. All right. So the correct answer here is 4464 VA. Now, how do we get to that point? We just take this square footage. 62 times 24 equals 1,488 square feet. That's the square footage. And according to 220.41, we need to now multiply that by the unit load of 3 volt amps per square foot. And so there's that math. And that works out to the 4464 VA. Now, that number, the 4464 VA, that is the branch circuit lighting load for this house. And that is the number you use, the 4464, to figure out how many branch circuits you need. You can't apply any demand factors to that. You don't use table 220.45. We're going to go to that table, the sizing features and services. But the 4464 you see on the screen, that is the number you use to figure out how many branch circuits you need for all the general lighting and general purpose receptacles. And it doesn't matter if you use 15 amp circuits or 20 amp circuits, that's the number you use, the 4464. Now, when we do the feeder or service calculation, we're going to take that number, the 4464, and then bring it over to table 220.45 and apply the demands in that table. Okay, section 220.45 and table 220.45 is where we're at next. And it says the demand factors in table 220.45 shall be applied, not an option. They shall be applied to that portion of the total branch circuit load calculated for general illumination, right? So you have to apply the table demands. And the demand factors in the table 220.45 shall not be applied in determining the number of branch circuits for general illumination, right? And that's just reiterating what I had stated earlier. Okay, here's my version of the table, very similar to the layout in the code. And you'll notice for dwellings, there are three portions, right? The first portion is 3,000 volt amps. And then you have the second portion from 3,001 volt amps up to 120,000 volt amps, that portion. And that gets taken at 35%. And then everything else above 120,000 volt amps, that gets multiplied by 25%. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that, that third portion, the 25% demand 
that is only used when the lighting load before you apply the table demands is greater than 120,000 volt amps. Okay, so keep that in mind. So for you know small houses or you know I guess it could be a pretty big house too, but uh, for most of the if we're just dealing with houses, you'll never get to that third portion. You might get to that third portion uh, if you're dealing with a gigantic house or if you are calculating the general lighting for an apartment building, for example. And we'll take a look at that in a second. For now, let's just ignore that third portion, right? We'll keep it simple. We'll just focus on portion one and portion two, and we'll worry about the third portion a little bit later. And I'll actually show you a shortcut that I think you'll find pretty easy to use. Um, some people, I think, have a difficult time when there's three portions and trying to figure out, you know, what numbers and which portions to multiply. So we're just going to forget the third portion for now, okay? We'll come back to that. We'll do that later. Just the first two portions. Okay, for example one, we're going to, we're going to be looking at the calculated load just for general lighting for a 2100 square foot house. All right, it's 2100 square feet, and so we multiply that by the unit load, right? Uh, three volt amps per square foot. That gets us to 6300 volt amps. And again, that is the number you would use to calculate how many branch circuits you need. But we are gonna do feeder or service calculations, so now we can apply the demands from table 220.45. Now, if you would like to pause the video here and try to figure out what the de demand load or the calculated load would be, you can do that. And then when you're done, however long it takes, you can just restart the video and we'll go through the answer, okay? Okay, so if we take this 6,300 volt amps and we apply the demands from table 220.45, it looks like this. That for, first portion comes out, that's 3,000 volt amps worth. We take that away. We are left with the second portion, 3,300 volt amps, right? And I told you, don't worry about the third portion yet. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And so the first portion gets taken at 100%. The second portion gets taken at 35%. Now we have to add those two portions together, all right? Add the first portion and the second portion. The first portion is always going to be 3,000 volt amps, right? You're always going to have some square footage, right? And there's a couple other things we can add uh, to the lighting, but you're always going to have 3,000 volt amps for that first portion. So for this problem, when we add the first portion to the second portion, we get a total of 4,155 VA. That is the calculated load or the demand load as some textbooks might call it, all right? It's 4,155. So that is the number that you use for sizing a feeder or service for this dwelling unit or this house. All right, in this example, uh, we have a bigger house. It's 3,500 square feet now, and we're just doing the general lighting, right? We're just calculating the general lighting demand load or calculated load. Okay. The square footage times the unit load is three volt amps per square foot, right? 3,500 square feet times three volt amps per square foot. That gets us a total of 10,500 VA. That's the number you used for sizing, uh, figuring out how many branch circuits you need, right? The 10,500 VA. But we want to apply the demands, right? Because we want to calculate the service or feeder load. Okay, give that a shot if you want to Pause the video. You can try to figure that one out. And then when you're ready, if you think you've got the right answer, you can restart the video and we'll go through the answer. Okay, 10,500 volt amps, but we want to apply the demand from the table. So we're going to take the first portion out. That's going to be 3,000 volt amps. And then whatever we're left with, that's the second portion, right? There's our first two portions. The first portion gets taken at 100%, so that's still 3,000 volt amps. And then the second portion we take at 35%. 
and that is 2625 VA. We have to now add those two portions together. Portion one plus portion two. 3,000 volt amps plus 2625 volt amps. That gets us to 5625 volt amps. That's the calculated load for general lighting for this 3,500 square foot house. And so you would add that load, the lighting load, to all the other loads in the house, right? A range, if there's a range, an electric dryer, all the appliances, all those things get added together uh, when you're sizing the service or the feeder, right? This is only the lighting portion. Now, to the lighting portion, right, we can add a couple other loads, which is pretty cool. If you take a look at 220.52, you are going to get permission to add the small appliance circuits and the laundry circuits to the general lighting load. You can add them all together, general lighting plus the small appliance and laundry, and then apply the demands from table 220.45. That's pretty cool, right? Now, a couple of the nuances, if you take a look at 220.52a, it says you're going to take uh, each small appliance circuit and include a load of 1,500 volt amps per circuit, right? And it doesn't matter if it's a required circuit or an optional one, right? You're only required to have two small appliance circuits. But the way this is worded, if you install a third small appliance circuit, you have another 1,500 volt amps that you need to add to the calculated load. And if you have a fourth, then it's another 1,500 volt amps, right? And that's just the way it's worded. It doesn't say, if you read the wording there, 220.52a, it doesn't talk about the required branch circuits. It talks about the circuits that are covered, right? And so two are required, all right? But you could have more than two. So if you have more than two, then you have an additional 1,500 volt amps for each small appliance circuit. Same thing goes for the laundry. You are only required to have one laundry circuit if there's laundry equipment. And so if you run another laundry circuit or if there's another laundry area, then it's another 1,500 volt amps that you have to add, okay? And again, these can be added to the lighting demand. Oh, sorry, not the lighting demand. You can, this, these loads, the small appliance to laundry loads can be added to the general lighting loads and then apply the demands of table 220.45. Okay, so for this example, I'd like to calculate the general lighting, the small appliance, and the laundry load, right? So it's everything. General lighting, small appliance, and laundry. We can add them all together and then apply the demands from table 220.45. So let's give that a shot. Okay, general lighting is 2,100 square feet times three volt amps per square foot. So the general lighting before any demands is 6,300 VA. And again, that's the number you use, 6,300 VA, to figure out how many branch circuits you would need for general lighting. Now to that, you can add the small appliance and laundry loads at 1,500 volt amps per circuit. Okay, so you have the general lighting there at 6,300 volt amps, and then you have the two small appliance circuits, 1,500 volt amps plus 1,500 volt amps, and then you have the one laundry circuit at 1,500 volt amps. That totals 10,800 volt amps. Now we want to apply the demands from table 220.45. Okay, we're going to go on to the next slide now. Okay, if you would like to tackle this, you can pause the video here and take a few minutes, see if you can apply the demands. And then when you're done, you can restart the video and I'll give you the answer, okay? Okay, 10,800 volt amps. We apply the demands from table 220.45. First portion comes out at 100%. That's 3,000 volt amps for the first portion. And we're left with the second portion and that's 7,800 volt amps. All right, and the first portion again is taken at 100%. Second portion is 
taken at 35%. And so you see those totals there. 3,000 volt amps for the first portion. The second portion ends up being 2730 volt amps. We have to add those two portions together. If we do that, we have a calculated load of 5,730 volt amps. 5,730 volt amps for the calculated load for the demand load for general lighting, small appliance, and laundry. Okay, here's the next example. Now we have a 3,500 square foot house, and we are going to uh, calculate the general lighting, small appliance, and laundry load. Okay, general lighting is 3,500 square feet times the unit load of 3 volt amps per square foot. That's 10,500 volt amps just for the general lighting portion. And again, that's the number, the 10,500, that's the number you use to figure out how many branch circuits you would like to install. Now we add the small appliance and laundry to that number. All right, so there's the general lighting, 10,500 volt amps plus the two small appliance circuits at 1500 volt amps each plus the laundry circuit at 1500 volt amps that's a total of 15,000 volt amps all right now we want to apply those demands again from table 220.45 so we'll continue this on the next slide okay now again if you want to tackle this uh, try applying the demands. You can pause the video anytime you want. And when you're done, you can restart the video and we'll give you the answer. All right, if we take that 15,000 volt amps and we apply the table demands, the first portion comes out, 3,000 volt amps. Whatever we're left with, we take that at 35%. All right, we are left with 12,000 volt amps in that second portion. And again, the first portion is taken at 100%. Second portion at 35%. So there's your first two portions. We have to add those together. And that gets us to a calculated load or a demand load of 7,200 volt amps. And so that's how much load is added to the service or feeder for the general lighting, small appliance, and laundry just those portions. And you add that load to all the other loads like the, a range, a dryer, and whatever other appliances and air conditioning and heat loads might be there. Okay, let's talk about that um, third portion again. If we take a look at the table 220.45. All right, again, that third portion is only applicable when the lighting load uh, or the combined lighting load plus small appliance and laundry is greater than 120,000 volt amps. All right, so let's see how that's going to work out. All right, so if we just focus on the general lighting for this, right, a 40,000 square foot house, right, just the general lighting. Not, we'll forget about the small appliance and the laundry for now, just for this example here. I just want to show you we're gonna, how we're going to max out the first two portions for this one. Okay, 40,000 square foot house. All right, so if we take the 40,000 square feet and multiply by three volt amps per square foot, that gets us to 120,000 volt amps. So we're not gonna be using the third portion yet, right? Once we're over 120,000 volt amps, then that would trigger the third portion, right? So we're gonna not quite be there, but we are gonna max out the first two portions. So if we apply the demands to the 120,000 volt amps, we are going to max out the first two portions. The first portion is always 3,000 volt amps. In this case, the second portion is 117,000 volt amps. Now, this is the biggest number the second portion would ever have, 117,000. Right? You have the first 3,000 volt amps, and then the next portion is 3,001 to 120,000 volt amps. Right? And so that portion is 117,000 volt amps. That's the biggest number you would ever have in that second portion. First portion is multiplied at 100%. Second portion is multiplied at 35%. So if we add those two together, the first portion maxed out and the second portion maxed out in this case, 
we get a calculated load of 43,950. Now, anytime you max out the first two portions, it's always going to end up being a demand or a calculated load of 43,950. It's it just always works out that way. All right? The first portion is always going to be 3,000 volt amps. The second portion is always going to be 40,950. So if we add them together, 43,950. It's kind of like a magic number. So watch what happens when we get to using that third portion, right? We didn't need it for this one, but on the next one, we're going to get to that third portion. Now keep that 43,950 in mind because we're going to bring it back in the next example. All right, we're going to be using that third portion now, that 25% demand portion. So in this example, we have a 42,000 square foot house. Or another way we could look at this, instead of saying it's a house, it's 42,000 square feet worth of dwelling unit space in a multifamily dwelling. All right, that's another way to look at it. It's, but in either case, it's still 42,000 square feet. And we multiply that by the unit load of three volt amps per square foot. So whether it's one house or several apartments with the floor space added together, it's 42,000 square feet either way. We take that and multiply by three volt amps per square foot. And that gets us to 126,000 volt amps. Now, we are before we've applied the demands from table 2245, we are over 120,000. And so in your mind, that's got to be a trigger that we're going to need that third portion, that 25% portion, right? So just keep that in mind. And I'll show you a shortcut in a minute. All right, there's the 126,000 volt amps. We're going to take away the first portion. It's always 3,000 volt amps for that, for that first portion. Second portion and because we are over 120,000, we're going to max out the second portion. Second portion maxed out is 117,000 volt amps. And what are we left with? We have 6,000 volt amps left, right? We've taken out the first 3,000. We've taken out the next 117,000. So that's 120,000 total. And we're left with 6,000 volt amps, right? So there's the, there's the three portions. And that first portion always gets taken at 100%. The second portion always gets taken at 35%. And the third portion gets taken at 25%. Now we have to add all three of these together. The first portion is 3,000 volt amps. The second portion is uh, 40,950 volt amps. And the third portion, is the demand, is 1,500 volt amps. So if we add those all together, we get a total of 45,450 volt amps, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a shortcut, which I think you'll find helpful. If you look at those, that first and second portion, right? They're maxed out, right? So if we, if we remember that, if, we're, if the VA is over 120,000 before we apply the demands, if we can remember that, the first and second portions are going to be maxed out. Well, those always total 43,950 once we apply the demand, right? So if we can keep that in mind, when applying that 25% demand, right, the demand for the first two portions is always going to total 43,950. So if we know that, it becomes a constant, and then we really only have to worry about the third portion, because we know the first two portions are going to total 43,950 once we apply the demands. So we really only have to calculate the third portion. So what's over and above 120,000? Well, in this case, it was 6,000 volt amps, right? So let's take a look at the next slide. All right, so if we just still using that 126,000 volt amps, right? If we just take away the first two portions, right? We just take, just take them away because we know that those are going to total 43,950. No matter what, they're always going to total 43,950 if you've maxed them out. And anytime your VA is over 120,000 volt amps before you apply the table demands, you're going to max out the first two portions. So just take them away. 
we know it, they're going to be 43,950. So just subtract 120,000 from that 126,000 volt amps because that's the first two portions, right? So if we do that, we are left with 6,000 volt amps, right? That's the remainder over and above 120,000 volt amps. So we can just focus on that third portion, right? And we don't have to worry about doing the first two portions because we know it's a given. Those are going to total 43,950 when we apply the demands. So we just have to focus on that third portion. So the third portion was 6,000 volt amps, and that portion gets taken at 25%. So that portion is 1,500 volt amps. Now we add that magic number, 43,950, back in. There it is. 43,950, that's the first two portions after the demands are applied and then add it together. It's 43,950, and then we add that to the third portion, which is 1,500 volt amps, and we're back to that. 45,450 volt amps. I hope you like that shortcut because I think it might be able to save you a couple minutes on the exam um, and it could make it a little easier out in the real world if you're you know, just trying to do the math. Hopefully you like that. Okay. In this example, right, you give this a try. Just use the shortcut method that I just showed you, right? So there's, before we apply the table demands, it's 143,000 volt amps, right? So now apply those table demands, right? And so there's, your, there's the number 143,000 volt amps before applying the demands from the table. So try that shortcut method that I showed you, right? Give that a shot and see what you come up with. If you want to pause the video here, you can do that. And then when you're done, you can come back and restart, and I'll give you the answer. Okay, let's just take away 120,000, right? Because that's the first two portions. First portion is 3,000. Second portion is 117,000. We just take that right out because we know that those two portions are going to total 43,950 once we apply the demands. So just take them out of the equation, right? And what are we left with? we're left with 23,000 volt amps. This is the portion we have to concern ourselves with, just this portion, right? So that portion gets taken at 25%, which is, uh, if we do that, it's 5750 volt amps. Add those two portions together. First portion and the second portion combined, 43,950, that magic number, 43,950. Add that to the third portion, 5,750, and you get a total of 49,700 volt amps. I love it, right? Hopefully that shortcut makes your life a little bit easier, and hopefully it saves you a little time on the exam. Thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Um, I plan on creating lots more of these videos. I'm going to be doing... Uh, range calculations and appliance calculations. So stay tuned for more. And for more information, visit my website, rustleblank.net. Thank you. See you in the next video.